Hey everybody, it's Greg here with another video. Um, so what we got today is a, uh, a dryer that I, I just want to show you guys how I diagnose a, a dryer not heating. Um, I guess we can look at other paths too while we're going through everything. But the main one I want to kind of diagnose, the question I get asked the most is for a dryer not heating. So um, yeah, we'll show you a uh, breakdown of that and we'll break out the meter and get right into it. Okay, so the dryer we're gonna be looking at today is a Whirlpool and kinda wanna let you guys in on a little secret here. So if you have your um, lint filter up top, that means that everything that controls heat and stuff like that is all going to be behind the dryer. If you have the style where the the uh, lint filter is right here, um, then you'd have to go through the front to get to all the uh, the parts that you want to test for no heating or or well, just about everything. Um, so what we're going to do. Uh, First is check for power. All right, so what you're looking at there is the dryer plug. So what we're gonna do is, I'll show you my meter here. So I've set my meter on uh, 600 volts. The only two options I really have there for AC is uh, 200 volts or 600 volts. Because this is, should be 240, um, we're gonna need more than 200. So we'll go with the 600 scale and i will test it so this is always the first thing you do um, with just about any issue with appliance um, the first thing you want to make sure is that you actually have power can you guys see that let's just see no let's turn this up a little bit okay there we go Okay, so this is how I like to do it. But pull it out a little bit, not you know, fully unplugging it, but enough that I can get on the side to the actual um, tabs I want to test on. So if I go from this side to this side, I should get 240, which we're getting 242, 243. Is, that is definitely close enough. Um, so we will go from, actually maybe I'll unplug this and I'll show you what I'm going to. So this is a neutral here, um, line one and line two, and then the ground. So next we're going to go from the neutral to line one and then neutral to line two. We should have 120 volts between there and there and there and there. So we'll plug it back in. And neutral is going to be underneath there. So we have 120 there. And then we'll jump over to the other side. And we have 120 there. So we know that the dryer is getting good power to it. So um, we just kind of work our way down the line and we'll keep testing as we take it apart. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do after testing the power at the wall is disconnect the cord. We don't need that connected anymore. Well, right now anyway. So then what we want to do, we know because we have our lint uh, trap up here, that everything is going to be on the back that we want to get to for heating and, and thermostats and all that kind of fun stuff. So we'll pull the dryer away from the wall. What you're going to want to watch is your ducting. You might have to, sometimes it's screwed to the back of the dryer. Sometimes it's taped to the back of the dryer. So check into that first before you try pull this out because you don't want to pull this whole thing down. Um, mine, I've already undid the, the tape that was on there. So, um, it will just kind of hang there usually if your if your joints are taped 
sufficient <laughs> they won't uh it won't just drop so we can pull this out and i'll i'll spin it around for you guys can see what uh what we're looking at so at this point what i like to give people the chance to do is clean out uh, behind here whether they just sweep it out or whatever they do um, you just don't get behind the dryer very often what we can also do is check um, inside the the actual vent going up the wall right where this 90 is is where things will, will build up and we can check in on the dryer side too and look inside that hole but we'll get this cleaned up and then we'll take a peek in there so um, so we know the dryer runs, um, it just doesn't seem to heat. We know we have the correct power, so what we need to do is go to the next step and we'll take the, the back off um, after we get this cleaned up and we'll start testing. Okay, so we've got it all cleaned out back here, so this is just looking into the the duct um, as it goes up the wall so there's a couple of little things in here that don't need to be in there so you can clean those out but there's really not not much in here um, sometimes this will be completely plug solid so um, we're good here so we know that you know the the vent wasn't restricted possibly causing you know one of the thermostats to blow so what we can also do is look in on the dryer side. Just switch this guy. So there's a little bit of stuff in that corner we can pick out of there, but yeah, it's pretty clean in here. So I'll get that out of there and then uh, I'll take this uh, back panel off of, off of the dryer. There's just a bunch of screws um, around the perimeter that we need to take off. All right, so we're in the back here. So we've taken the panel off. Um, now we have the, the first thing that I always check is this guy right here. Um, this is called the thermal fuse. I'd say 90% of the time, <laughs> this guy is the problem. So, I'm just going to pull this connector off. Okay. So, what I've set my meter to is the lowest ohm setting that I have. And on this case, it's 200. Um, that'll be fine to test this guy. So, So, we want to put our leads, take off, uh, wire off one of the sides, and put your leads right on that thermal fuse. So, um, if you can see that mirror, it's essentially saying zero. With zero, zero point one is what it's at right now. Um, that's exactly what we want. We want there to be continuity, and that tells us that there is. Uh, a path through both of these connectors that is not broken. So we know that guy's good. Um, so next I'll move on to the actual heater. Um, let's turn you guys just a little bit. There we go. So the heater. Um, is up to right here. It's just this piece right here. So the actual connectors for it are right here. So we will take those off and test between between the contacts for the heater. So once again, we'll take off one of the sides. So, hopefully you guys can see that, all right. So, 
put a mirror lead on one side, mirror on the other side, and we're reading 9.5. Um, these heaters will be um, right around between 9 and 9.5 give or take about 10 percent or so but that's exactly where we want that to be so we know the heater's good <clears throat> okay so there's another thermostat up here so we can test this guy and this is usually pretty much the the order i would go in like i said a lot of the times um, that thermal fuse is blown so we don't really even need to make it to this step but um, I'm just showing you guys, you know, if that guy's fine, if the heater's fine, then this is the normal route that I take. So, hold my meter up here. So, I'm going to go from one side to the other side. And we want very, well, as close to zero as we can possibly get, which is about there. So that's fantastic. So this guy is good too. Okay, so we'll come back over to um, just below this thermal fuse. There's another thermostat here. So there's four connections on it. Um, it's usually always a red wire, but the two outer connections is what we want to take off. And we can check for resistance there too. So, hold this here for you. So, our meter leads on one of each side, and we're getting zero, which is good. So, this is exactly what you would want to see um, if your dryer is working fine because, <laughs> well, none of this should be bad. Okay, so one more thermostat. Um, and it's just above the connections um, for the heater. This one is very rarely ever blown, but we can do the same thing. Put our meter leads across it and we should get very close to zero, which we are getting. So. That is fantastic. If for some reason at this point, um, you know, you weren't getting uh, any heat to the heater, but you've tested everything back here and everything tests out exactly like it's tested out for us, it's tested fine, um, then you know you're gonna have um, a power supply issue. So. Either the, the power is not making it down to the heater um, or possibly, well, along that same line, I guess, um, possibly a broken wire somewhere. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot tougher to, to test stuff like that and 99% of the time you won't ever have to. Okay, so I just wanted to touch on something while I'm back here. We may as well um, pick this a bit apart anyway. So if you find that your heater is the actual uh, problem, there is um, two screws, one on each side of the heater right there. So you can take them out and that whole heater will drop down. I'll show you guys how that works in a sec here because it's it's kind of a little different than than most heaters on, on on most dryers but the ones that are on the back of the of the dryer are usually like this anyway now that those two screws are out so you're just going to pull it out just a little bit and then slide it down and this will come right off and that is what a heater looks like so what will happen uh, nine times out of 10 is one of these coils will get too hot. There'll be you know, some kind of a hot spot on it and it'll, it'll just break. Once it breaks, it's not going to provide any heat whatsoever unless, you know, the brake actually touches the, the cavity or something like that. Then you can have a whole bunch of other issues like heat not wanting to turn off. Um, 
but yeah in most cases it just breaks and when you test on here it will test as open it won't have any resistance through it and then you know you know your actual heater needs to be changed um, from what i've ever seen i don't think you can actually get this thing as a little pack with just a heater in it this housing is always part of it so you get this whole this whole deal here which makes it a lot easier to change too so putting it back on you just want to make sure that it goes in behind this upper part here and it just slides up so basically you slide it up um, until these screws um, line up again it should go up fairly easy. If it's not, put a little bit more angle on it. And that's it. So then we can put these screws back in. All right, so when we've got the, the back um, back on the dryer, always make sure um, you check all the connections that you were testing and make sure you actually uh, reconnected them. So yeah, make sure everything's all hooked up. Um, if you've changed a part, um, yeah, make sure that the, the wires are, are reattached and everything. Um, slide it back, rehook up your vent, um, and then we're we're ready to test at this point. So um, now plug this guy back in. Watch when your um, when you're unplugging or plugging back in a dryer, um, if you put your hands on the prongs or across the prongs, or well, your fingers, um, you will get zapped pretty good. So make sure you're just touching the, the rubber part of the plug. Um, yeah, and you'll be fine. So I like to stick the dryer on a time dry because a time dry cycle is usually high heat um, <clears throat> and it won't kick off due to the the sensors or anything like that saying that you know the clothes are dry which there's no clothes in there so of course it's gonna kick us out right away because the sensors are dry so yeah at that point you can just start start your dryer up and you can you can either just feel the pipe and, and after about two minutes or so you should be able to feel the, the temperature change happening there or you can just wait a little bit and open the door and put your hand in and make sure that it's actually heating now um, so yeah that's uh, here I'll stop this yeah that's nice and warm already Okay, so yeah, that's exactly how I test um, this style of dryer that you have to get in behind to, to test all the thermostats and heater and everything. Um, there, there's not a lot to it. Uh, it's, it's fairly easy. Sometimes it can be a pain in the butt trying to disconnect the vent from the back of the dryer, but that's you know, usually the hardest part of the whole thing. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I um, hope you learned something on this. Uh, hit that like button if you like the video or, you know, maybe you learned something you didn't know. Um, hit the subscribe button if uh, you want to watch more videos like this on every other appliance too. Have a good night.